Dustin Baker, Vikes now, the Friday, April 8th edition. You might notice there's no Nick Olsen. He and I had a scheduling snafu, evidently. He'll be back, or he'll be on debut for the first time uh, a week from now on Friday. Incidentally, that'll be closer to the draft, so we'll get to pick his brain with a more fine-tuned sense of what, what might happen. But today we're here to talk about the signing of Julian Taylor, who played for the 49ers, and we're going to figure out whether or not that moves the needle for the Vikings. Now, admittedly, if they had signed this guy in the same week that Chandon Sullivan and Zedarius Smith would, came aboard, we probably wouldn't do a show on Julian Taylor because he just would have been folded in with the rest of the, the boys. But this is after the fact, so I'll, I want to do a little a brief spot about who he is and what you can expect. First thing to know, that the new general manager, Kwesi Adafo Mensa, this is a Hail Mary acquisition. Doing a solid to a guy that was with the job you used to work at. Maybe he's got something in the tank. Maybe this will be one of the coolest stories you've ever heard. And, you know, he'll be a starter for the Vikings defensive line in no time. That's a long shot. Um, This gentleman hasn't played football since December of 2019. Um, But here's the deal. Adafo Mensa was employed for seven seasons with San Francisco 49ers. And Julian Taylor was right there with them for the final three. He is a seventh-round draft pick from the 2018 draft from Temple. He's kind of in the mold of he was an edge rusher coming out or scouted as an edge rusher, but he's more built like a defensive tackle, like a a three-tech, a traditional three-tech. So I think he'll be, if he makes this roster, he'll he'll be slotted as a defensive tackle type, um, but, you know, probably as a depth individual. He's played 203 snaps in the NFL, which... You, know, you look around, that ain't much. Uh, it's not a good omen that this is the guy you wanted to you know, get significant play within the Vikings defense. Uh, the year that he did play was the 2019 season. He had a 67.9 PFF grade in that 203 snap sample size. Unfortunately for his sake, he was hurt in December of 2019. If you're a historian of the game, that's right as the San Francisco 49ers are making their push to the Super Bowl. So he didn't uh, get to experience that, at least on the field. Um, But he is a signing as we tunnel towards the draft, because they're probably going to add an edge rusher there at some point, then on to the the training camp portion of the season to be there, to compete. And so he will battle it out with several other dudes, which I'll rattle off here in a moment, to possibly make the 53-man team come autumn. A fun fact... This might be morbid. Hopefully you're in a good mood. This gentleman, Julian Taylor, was drafted on the same day that the Vikings drafted Daniel Carlson from, you know, to to do the stuff that he did against the Packers and ultimately get cut and then go have a Pro Bowl career with the Las Vegas Raiders. So that is just an interesting thing for you to note that if you if you study history like I do in your brain, that he became an NFLer the same day as Daniel Carlson. So yeah, tore the ACL, 2019. Usually when that happens these days, you're back in what? Five months, six months? Remember when Adrian did it in 2011 into 2012? It was considered like a cyborg type of thing. And then now, now what he did, everybody does. They're back before you know it from torn ACLs. You know, it used to be if you if you tore your ACL in week 14, ooh, boy, you're done for the following year, too. And now it's like, oh, so that, that stinks. He'll have to heal up for September, and he'll be back. Thankfully, we've come that far with medicine, but he hasn't. Uh, Julian Taylor hasn't played since December of 2019. Get that out of the way. Makes him an automatic long shot to make a football team. You thought Colin Kaepernick was a long shot. Uh, he hasn't played since 2016. And so you can both 49ers. They got some voodoo going on there. Uh, So generally speaking, this is a long shot for Julian Taylor to make the Vikings team. A team did give him an audition last year. That was the Tennessee Titans. They signed him in February of 2021, got rid of him June 2021, before the theatrics of the summer training camp preseason even started. So no idea why they cut him. We'll probably never find out, but we shall see if the Vikings follow suit there. Um, So here is the the current depth chart for defensive linemen for the Minnesota Vikings. Daniil Hunter, Patrick Jones II, James Lentz, something called T.Y. McGill, Harrison Phillips, the new guy, Janarius Robinson, fruit of the Stephon Diggs trade, Jordan Scott, the big dude, uh, you probably remember from training camp, big round guy, T.J. Smith, one of the Smiths that the Vikings love, Harrison Smith, Irv Smith, Amir Smith, 
You get the point. Zadarius Smith, another Smith. Dalvin Tomlinson, Julian Taylor now, Jalen Twyman, the dude who was shot, uh, Armin Watts, Kenny Willekes, and DJ Wanham. <clears throat> That's a lot of guys. It's not unusual to have that many right now as you, as you tunnel towards a 90-man roster in the summer. But in theory, for Kwesi's guy Taylor to make this team, he's going to have to oust about five or six of those men in order to make the team. Now, it all depends on if he's any good this, this summer. Once he gets on the field and shows off what he has, if he's a maniac, then cool. Then we do have a, a bona fide reclamation project on our hands. But yeah, his, his task in front of him is mighty because he's going to have to get rid of six guys off that depth chart to even have a sniff of regular season playing time. So the it depends on where they use him. If he went back to his edge rusher days, the Vikings arguably... Decent edge rushers, especially at the top. The top of the billing is fine with Daniil Hunter and Zedaria Smith, but then after that, it's a bunch of hopeful maybes. And they're adding another one in the mix with Julian Taylor as a hopeful maybe. Uh, his college coach at Temple, Jeff Collins, called him an elite-level talent, like NFL-level talent. Um, but then you start to ask yourself, is this just something that all college coaches say? Maybe, but not necessarily. The guy's going to stick his neck out on the line to predict that this uh, Taylor is going to thrive in the NFL. He didn't have to say anything, uh, but he did He did endorse him coming out in that 2018 NFL draft. So, hey, at least his college coach believed in him. Could that materialize? Maybe, but probably not. And then the final interesting part on this, if you like these little factoids that I find, is at Temple, Julian Taylor was teammates with Nate Harrison who the Vikings sign as a CB4 or so, CB5. I'm not sure what his role will be. But, yeah, he was a teammate there. So these guys will reunite at least for month June or something like that. And then on that same team was also Hassan Reddick, who is an edge rusher for now the Philadelphia Eagles. So they must have had a, def a decent little defense there for a couple period of years at Temple. I don't know. I don't follow Temple. But yeah, that is the the brief synopsis on Julian Taylor. Is he is the hail mary signing? One of them, a value based signing. We keep talking about that word with Quasi to say, hey, maybe this uh, ACL tear that he had a few years ago was a freak thing. Maybe he is all that. The seventh round guy, nobody has discovered yet. Uh, maybe he'll get some tread within the purple defense. Extremely unlikely, but I would love to be wrong and have him blossom into something. Something neat, something cool. Uh, that's all I got. I will be back Saturday with a topic. Reminder that Ben Lieber is on Monday. Lindsey Young, who covers the Vikings for the Vikings, will be on Wednesday. And then we'll get Nick, I promise, back on a week from today. Skull, baby. <laughs>